Hi fellow crafters! This week I'm going to show you a fun coloring technique to make a real standout card using the Art Gallery stamp set and the Meadows dies. My card is going to be a birthday card, but you can adapt this coloring technique for any occasion you need. So let's get started! Hey everyone, I'm Terry and I'm nuts about stamping. I love sharing techniques and project ideas for card making, scrapbooking, and paper crafting with you each week. Be sure to hit that red subscribe button and the bell beside it so that you'll be the first to be notified when my next video goes live. Now, let's wow your family and friends with your artistic abilities. <laughs> I've published a few videos using the Quiet Meadow Bundle, but thought you might be new to my channel, so let's have a look at them first. So there are a variety of sizes and shapes to these dies. They also have, the pack also has two butterflies, and then a tag, and then sort of a banner or a, a frame for a phrase. And they're just really fun to use. So you can purchase them separately, or you can bundle them with the Quiet Meadow stamp set and get a 10% discount overall. So I'm going to be using the stamp set, part of it, and the dies, and another stamp set for today's project. My card base is going to be Highland Heather. I've cut it eight and a half by five and a half, and then I'm going to fold it I could use my scoring board if I wanted to, my Simply Scored, but it's only this one card. I tend to use my Simply Scored when I have multiples of cards I want to make. I'm just gonna burnish it with my bone folder so that the, the crease is nice and crisp. So my card is going to have this as a base. Now I'm going to do a bit of die cutting for some elements that I'm going to put on the front of my card, and then I'm going to show you this really cool technique for coloring the dies. I have a piece of Whisper White cardstock, and I am going to use this die from the Scallop Contours Dies Pack. Love these dies. I think they are absolutely amazing with all of the scallop edges you can you can there's so many ideas that you can create with these scallops so i've chosen two scallops out of the pack one is to create a layer for the front of my card using this piece of whisper white and the second one is a much smaller one another scallop frame and i'm going to die cut my phrase now my card is going to be a birthday card so from the Art Gallery stamp set, let me show you that. Here's the Art Gallery stamp set. Love all of the phrases in here. I've chosen the Happy Birthday stamp. I've mounted it to a clear block, and I'm going to ink it up using Highland Heather, which is matching the card base for today's card. And I'm just gonna stamp it in the center of this Whisper White layer. And then I'm going to bring in my stamp and cut and emboss machine, and I'm going to die cut these two elements out for the front of my card. So I'm gonna use my magnetic platform, and I'll put the first die on, and then my phrase, like so. And I will go ahead and die cut this out, and I'll come back and show you the next step for making this card. There are the two elements I have ready for my card. I'm just gonna put them aside for a second because now I want to do some more die cutting using the Meadows dies. But what I'm going to use for my paper for die cutting is this Fluid 100 watercolor paper. So I absolutely love this watercolor paper. It's not a pure white color, but don't worry about that. You're gonna see how we're gonna make some magic happen with the Meadows dyes. But it's much thicker than our basic white that we have. And um, it's perfect because it absorbs water into it 
and it's perfect for painting or for watercoloring, which is what we're going to do for this technique. So I have taken two of the dies from the Meadows dies, and I have cut a piece of the Fluid 100 watercolor paper that I'm going to use to die cut each of these dies. Now, let me bring in my uh, Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine and I'll do that again. And then I'll give you another bit of directions for this card. So again, I'll lay these on, get them ready to die cut. But here is a little tip for you. Remember I said that the watercolor paper, my magnetic platform is not behaving here. Let me turn it sideways perhaps. Um, this fluid watercolor paper is thicker than our normal basic white cardstock. So my recommendation to you is to run it through like you would normally do and then run it back again. And that just gives sort of an extra bit of pressure and hopefully this will pop out of the paper without any fuss or mess. Yeah, there we go. So by going forward and back, you'll be able to take the die cut pieces out of the watercolor paper without any sort of sticking or there'll be no problem at all. It's just bent a little bit. Okay, so <laughs> let me get this out. There we go. Really, it wasn't stuck. It just got caught. So what you want to do next is you want to cut another one of these and two more of these so that for your card, you will end up with three of this particular die and two of this particular die. So what I'm going to do is grab my watercolor paper and I'm going to go ahead and die cut two more of these and one more of these. I'll stop the video because you've seen me do it once. You don't need to see me do it a few more times. I'd have to do it two more times for this one and one more time for this one. So I'll be back in a moment and I'll show you the next step for making this card. All right, I have my bits and pieces already die cut. And what I'm gonna do is show you with these two particular pieces, how to do this coloring technique. So I'm gonna bring in a scrap piece of grid paper that I use just for stamping over or stamping off. And I'm just gonna put this underneath. And then I have a paper towel that I'm also going to utilize for this. So remember I said at the beginning of the video that this was going to be a coloring technique. So what you're going to do is you're going to color these dyes using the water painters. Now, this is an old water painter that Stampin' Up! used to sell several years ago in their former catalogs. Well, in the new annual catalog that was just released uh, about a month ago, Stampin' Up! has come out with a new pack of water painters, and each of these does exactly the same thing. It holds fluid or liquid for easy water coloring. So if you were to order the new pack, you would get three painters in it. You would get one with a fine tip, one with a medium tip, and one with a large flat brush tip. This, as I said, is an older one, and I think this would liken more to the medium tip. So you use these water painters with watercolor paper, or you can also use them with shimmery white cardstock and you can use them with your watercolor pencils, or as in this case, for today's card, we're gonna use a classic ink pad. So I've chosen two colors. I have the soft sea foam, and no surprise, I have Highland Heather. So let me show you this technique. What you wanna do is get the water started. You're gonna squeeze the barrel gently, and you're gonna get the water flowing down through the barrel and into the brush. Then you're going to open up your ink pad and if you have the re-inkers for the colors you're going to use 
for this project, you would put a drop of the reinker into the lid of the ink pad. If you don't, it is possible to pick up ink from the ink pad itself, not as uh, convenient perhaps, not as effective. That's the word I wanted. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just squeeze again, get some ink running, and then I'm gonna put this one aside and I'm gonna bring this one in and I'm going to literally add Highland Heather to the flower part. So I'm gonna color the buds and the flowers with Highland Heather. Now, you can make it as dark or as light as you want. You've got lots of choices here. What I would suggest is start out lighter and then you can go back and add a darker color if you want. I think it also depends on how much water you have mixed into your ink. Obviously, if you use a lot of water, the color is going to be saturated and much lighter, but you can also go back and add a darker layer on top, like so. And then to clean it, you're just going to squeeze the barrel a little bit and just wipe it on your paper towel until it comes clean. So that's what I'm gonna do with the Highland Heather for all three of my flowers. And then for the soft sea foam, I bet you can figure this one out, what I'm going to do is use the soft sea foam for the stems. So I'm just gonna bring in and again, lightly touch. I love how the color just runs so smoothly absorbs in, and then really in just a couple of minutes, they'll be completely dry. So I'm going to color all the way down. Again, you can do it as light or as dark as you want. It all depends on your eye and how you want it to look. Then for these two stems, I'm going to just use the soft sea foam. I'm not gonna add any other color. I'm just gonna have the flowers be the Highland Heather and everything else is going to be soft sea foam. And I've got quite a lot of water. So my color is quite light, but that's okay. You'll see how it's going to look on the card in a couple of seconds. So this is how you take the Meadows dyes and combine it with a fun coloring technique so that you can create these dyes in any color that you want. So Stampin' Up! has several, I think we have 48 colors that you can choose from. Perhaps you have a different ink style at home but that's how you can color these. So what I'm going to do is, remember I said you're gonna die cut three of these and two of these? I'm going to go ahead and stop the video and color the rest of my dies, and I'll be back and I'll show you how to put these all together to create a stunning birthday card idea. I have all the pieces colored and I've gathered and laid out everything that I'm going to use to create my beautiful birthday card. What I'm gonna do first though, is I'm just gonna move these out of the way. And I wanna start with this piece here, the scallop layer. Now in the Quiet Meadow stamp set, there's this splatter stamp. And what I would like to do is add a bit of a splatter to my base or the layer. So I've gone ahead and I have added the stamp to a clear block. And what I want to do though, is I want it to be almost not noticeable. So I'm gonna ink it up. I'm gonna stamp off once, stamp off twice, and then I'm going to stamp it down. Now you may not be able to see it very clearly, but it is there. And I'm going to do a second one. And I think I'll do a third one. I like to do things that are uneven numbers like so. So you can barely see it, but it will be somewhat noticeable on the card when the card is finished, and it'll just add a nice artistic touch. 
So if you have splatter stamps like this at home, try doing it not full strength ink, but a lighter color of ink by stamping off a few times. That's also another technique called generational stamping. The next thing I'm going to do is add some adhesive. I'm going to use my multi-purpose liquid glue and I'm going to add some glue to the back of this phrase and I'm going to put it in the top right hand corner of this layer like so. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to adhere this layer to the front of my card. Again, using my multi-purpose liquid glue. And then it's time to add the Meadows dies that I have die cut and watercolored. I'm gonna set this aside for a second. Now, what I want to do for all of these is I want to arrange them so that they look like a bouquet. So I want to bunch them together and then add them to the front of my card. So I'm going to do that using my silicone craft sheet. And I'm going to put these two down first. I want these in the background, but I also want them to be fairly close together. And then what I'm going to do is add glue to the stems and then I'm going to bring in my mini Stampin' Dimensionals and I'm going to add two dimensionals so that it will help this layer pop up. But I'm not going to take the covers off of the dimensionals. What I want to do first is adhere these all together like a bouquet. So I'll go ahead and continue doing this and then I'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like and then we'll attach it to the front of the card. I have them adhered together so they're like a little bouquet and then what I'm gonna do is turn it over and I'm going to take off <clears throat> the covers of the mini Stampin' Dimensionals so that this will help then adhere my little bouquet to the front of my card. There's another one there. Yeah, I think I have them all. Oh, no, there's one more. Okay, now I'm going to bring my card back in and what I want to do is I want to lay my bouquet at an angle across the front of my card like so. Now there's two final touches that we're going to add to complete this card. The first final touch is to add a bit of ribbon because a lot of flowers have ribbons or they have something that ties them all together. So I have the Fresh Freesia ribbon. It's the Open Weave ribbon. It's not the same color as Highland Heather, but you really won't notice it on this card. So I went ahead and I cut a bow. I made a bow and cut it off the bolt and I'm going to attach that bow using a mini glue dot and I'm going to put it onto my bouquet so it looks like they're holding them it's holding them all together like so and then I also have my in color gems which are the new in colors and I've decided I'm going to use again the fresh freesia ones and I'm going to add three of the larger gems to my card just so that it draws the eye in and adds a little bit of a beautiful sparkling touch. There's something attached to one of these gems. Let me get it cleaned up and I'll come back and attach it. And there we go. My card is complete and ready to send to somebody special. 
If you would like a complete listing of the supplies that I used and the measurements for all of the layers, head on over to my blog, www.nutsaboutstamping.com. And while you're on my blog, why not join my free newsletter subscription list? I send out two newsletters each week, and in each one, I will feature a project that you won't see anywhere else. If you would like more ideas for how to use these amazing water painters, for all sorts of different card techniques, let me know in the comments section under this video. I'm Terry. I am nuts about stamping. I hope you watercolor something beautiful today too. Bye for now.